Hello, gangly gang, what's going on? I am in Lawrence, Kansas, passing through. Quick stop at Oak Hill Cemetery. And we're gonna visit the grave of, this is gonna be a short one, but it's someone very remarkable, a very amazing woman that did some firsts in this country. I think first in the world, actually. So let's go walk to her graves and on the way, We'll look at some amazing old tombstones. This is Oak Hill where we, we've we done a couple of episodes. We did a live here. There's a lot of history here in Lawrence. We saw the grave of Mr. Lane, the Jayhawker, and the Eldridges. I actually just visited the grave of the Eldridge family, the famous hotel here. The hotel was sacked with everything else in the Quantrill raid. And Fog Allen and across the street down the road, Mr. Naismith who invented basketball. So yeah, if you get to Lawrence, you gotta have a you've gotta have a look at this place. And as the name suggests, it is filled with oak trees, making for a very peaceful, very peaceful walk. Very calming walk. So the, the woman's name we're talking about, well, let me start with this. In 1855, Emmeline Roberts Jones was the first woman to practice dentistry. And that was quite remarkable, but it was Lucy Hobbs Taylor who was the first to do a few other things, among which first to open a dental practice which was in Chicago, Illinois. She was born March 14th, 1833. She was born in Constable, New York, and she was a school teacher. And she wanted to be a dentist. She always wanted to be a dentist. And she finally got her application in and she applied at the school the Ohio College of Dentistry. And what do you think happened? Well, to no surprise back in those days, if you were female, it was, you were considered second class behind the men, unfortunately, and it was not right, but that's the way it was. So she was denied, she was denied, said sorry. You're a woman, you can't come in here because of your gender. So in 1862, she moves to Iowa and she's like, heck with you. I know more than a lot of dentists. I don't have a diploma, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna practice. And guess what? She became really, really popular. They loved her there. And, and she started just growing the clientele and making an unbelievable name for herself. And she gained complete acceptance. She opened that practice without a diploma, didn't matter. She didn't let, she didn't let the system hold her back. She was a pioneer and she persevered and she broke through the barriers. She's one of those women of many who did that and still do that today. It's interesting because she persevered onward and she actually became a member and delegate for the Iowa State Dental Society. And it was ironic because the Ohio College of Dentistry finally threw up their arms and said, okay, we want you, come back, come back, please. They were looking pretty bad. So she came back and they said, you know what? You've got all this experience. You're amazing. You just have to come back. You can come back as a senior. You don't have to do freshman, sophomore, junior year. You're, we're gonna give you credit. Thanks guys. So Lucy enrolled and as a senior, 
he continued on with doctoral, a doctoral degree, of course, you know, being a dentist. And it turned out she was the first female in the world to reach doctoral level and receive a diploma. First in the world. So two firsts, first to get that diploma and she was first to open a practice. Like I said, it was Chicago, it was 1867. And she did really, really well. In fact, in fact, she had taught her husband, <laughs> not surprisingly, she talked her husband how to be a dentist and, and they opened like a practice together. I think that's how they did it. And she's legend, man, she's legend, come on. Give her her kudos. This is her marker right here. And as we look down, I believe these are the two, two burial places, her and uh, Lucy and her husband. So let's have a look. It looks like a Woodman of the World type marker. Of course, when we see this, it really typically signifies that people who died here with this it symbolizes died too young. Not always, not in this case. So we have J.M. Taylor, born October 26, 1829, died December 14th, 1886. And of course there's Lucy, Lucy Hobbs Taylor born March 14, 1833, died October 3rd, 1910. So she lived to be a ripe old age. Her husband, yeah, medium. But here is, I see the inscription here, Lucy. So this is Lucy. She's right here, gang. What a beautiful grave. It's too bad there's no flowers here. I am going to go back in my car and I have some, I have a flower for her. So I will cut right out. I'm gonna insert that in at some point and there's JM. And I think this might be a daughter or 1887 to 1889. So. I'm not sure if it's a boy or a girl, but I'm gonna presume with the name Lucy. I do see Lucy now. Oh, oh well, it says, well, you know what? It says Lawrence on top. I don't know, but maybe somebody, somebody can figure that out. Okay, so from Lawrence, Kansas at Oak Hill, a little short here on a remarkable, amazing woman. Lucy Hobbs Taylor. See you later, guys. Stay safe.